New at six, phones and more smuggled into the Fulton County Jail. Tonight, the Fulton County Sheriff's Office confirms it has an ongoing corruption investigation and four corruption. security officers who work for a contract company four? arrested. Channel 2 investigative reporter Mark Whitty is live at the jail where he's been pouring over the warrants against these four. Mark, you found some allegations that seem shocking. Shocking. Yeah, a Fulton County Sheriff's Office official says this investigation Fulton County. started in May Atlanta. and more arrests are expected. But for now, four young women are residents of the jail where they worked until yesterday. They work for strategic security. I can't confirm that they have all been terminated. The Fulton County Sheriff's Office says it turns out four security officers working for a contractor at the... These four were hired for strategic security? Who the hell hired them? Task Rabbit? <laughs> like, what was the other one? Thumbtack? Like, who who hired these people? Let's let it let's let it play out. County jail were security problems. Records suggest Briasha Tate Briasha. using a book to hide phones. Allegedly confessed to. Stop. Listen, y'all. I have to stop it there. You hear what he just said? Contractor at the county jail were security problems. Records suggest Briasha Tate admitted using a book to hide phones. The instant you seen this woman, Briasha Tate, hold on, Rec her right there. The instant you seen her walk into, I ain't got no, I ain't got a book within arm's reach. But <laughs> I was about to pull out a book. The second you seen her walk in there with a book. You already knew she was up to something. This woman ain't had a book in her hand since she left high school. And even then, she didn't have a book. Now, listen. Second you see her walking a book with a book, you're going to think that that's kind of odd. And you're probably going to be suspicious. But nobody caught on? Nobody? Record suggests Briasha Tate admitted using a book to hide phones. Allegedly confessed to... <laughs> Smuggling in cell phones in a cutout inside a book? Yes. Now one might. <laughs> you want to hide something from a ninja, put it in a book. Or in this case, you want to hide a cell phone from the guards, put it in a book. Same Say thing. that Fulton County Sheriff's Office is throwing the book at her after a corruption investigation. A lot of book puns. We counted 10 criminal warrants like naming her. Records indicate after she reported to work Tuesday, she was transported to the jail investigations unit's office. And that Ms. Tate stated she had sexual intercourse with an inmate inside of the bathroom in the tower on floor 7 South on three separate occasions. That Ms. Tate stated she brought a total of six cell phones inside of the jail and gave them to the inmate. That Ms. Tate stated she cut portions of the pages of the inside of a book and concealed the phones inside of the hole in the book. Oh. That Ms. Tate stated she brought strips, paper laced with chemicals used for smoking, inside of the jail on two separate occasions that Ms. Tate stated she received payments from the inmate via cash app for the contraband items she brought in and gave to him and that her cash app payment summary from the inmate showed a total of $1,682. We can't scream. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. Ninjas be hustling. He made way more money. That's $1,682 that he paid her. He was probably selling a cell phone for 1500 by itself probably more than that right so it's like you know once a hustler always a hustler i'll give him that i will give him that i've never seen the drug supply as new at six uh, phones and more my bad, stated team. she brought a total of six cell phones inside of the jail and gave them Go to back the a inmate bit. That Ms. Tate stated she cut portions of the pages of the inside of a book and concealed the phones inside of the hole in the book. That Ms. Tate stated she brought strips, paper laced with chemicals used for smoking, inside of the jail on two separate occasions. That Ms. Tate stated she received payments um, from the inmate via cash app on two for the occasions. She brought in when I'm and drunk gave to him. And I'm high. And that her cash high app from the inmate showed a total of $1,682. We can't scream for integrity. She Natalie Ammons of the Sheriff's Office says terminated security officer Regina Harris faces three warrants related to a contraband cell phone provided to an inmate. Ms. Ammons says terminated security officer 
Lacuna Ballard is accused of sending explicit photos and videos to an inmate, plus a couple of conspiracy charges involving conversations about how to bring cigarettes and cell phones into the jail. And Ms. Ammon says terminated security officer Anisia Silas faces a conspiracy charge involving a phone charger and a charge involving giving an inmate unauthorized food, namely a chicken pot pie. Why does it have to involve chicken? Anything but chicken. You couldn't bring him a lettuce wrap? <sighs> you know what, team? I, I am just really, like, not surprised by any of this. I'm not surprised. And, you know, my thing is this. These women were given the opportunity, the privilege, to be able to work in a male facility as women and be trusted to not screw the pooch. And they did. And this is my thing, team. Like, honestly, women are more sexually aggressive than men now. Unpopular take, maybe popular. I know this anecdotally. <laughs> I know this for me personally, but I see this more in the public eye in social media. You know, as far as all kinds of different sites. You know, you got your TikToks and your IGs and your Twitters. and I don't participate on Facebook per se, but when I did used to be a participant on the Facebook platform, now Meta, I mean, I've seen this. The women are ultra aggressive sexually. They can't even control themselves. It's the whole reason that the whole 90 day, remember when Steve Harvey came out with the, uh, was it? it was 90 days, wasn't it, Steve Harvey? 90 days, don't, don't, uh, um, you know, have sex or whatever. And like now, and I ain't gonna lie, she don't look far, she don't look much different than the people that she hired. Are we going DEI on this one, y'all? But um, yeah, yeah, the reason why the 90 days don't work no more it's not because of the men, it's because of the women. They cannot wait 90 days. They can't wait 90 days. They can barely wait 90 minutes in 90 days. Can't wait three days. First date, they're giving it up. I'm telling you, y'all ain't gotta believe me. I know a lot of men probably don't have this happen because women are usually attracted to the smaller portion of the men. Either the guys like what these women were giving it up to the guys in prison and the thugs and the killers and drug dealers and all that. But then also the top tier men, the men that make a lot of money or the men that look, you know, good by whatever standard, you know, six foot tall, muscular, whatever. No, you know, receding hairline, you know, good features in shape, six pack, all that type of stuff. Like these guys are still the minority of men, you know, especially when you combine all of those. So the women, and they'll still they'll still be with these type of women. They'll have sex with them, and these women have sex with them. So they're only looking at the the top percentage of men. And then what happens is like, you know, now this is what you got. So listen, I'm I'm completely confused by you know what's going on as far as who hired these people. But I will say this about Fulton County. And actually, I was just out in Fulton County. Y'all don't believe me? I got the footage. Let's go there real quick. I got it right here. I downloaded it. Um, I uploaded it to my Snapchat and took like some videos and stuff. Um, I think we're gonna have to turn the sound down. Let me see, which one am I gonna start with? Which one is this? Okay, yeah, yeah, this I one. I got the hair. Hold on, I got it. I got to turn the, uh, the sound off on this because I had the radio playing, as you can see in the car. Return of the Mac. I'll play it real quick so you can hear Harris, it. Harris, 2025 or four. Which one is it? All right, yeah, so you can hear it. I, I can't play the music because it's going to get copywritten. How are they going to copyright my own, my own music or my own video? So look, you can see it right there. That's actually Georgia State University. I did not even know Kamala was there. This was the same night that Megan Thee Stallion went on stage and twerked. <laughs> 
So I'm just actually, I was out there and I was just riding around. I was just riding around the city, right? I'm not from Atlanta, but I actually missed my flight. So I ended up just getting a rental car because my flight got postponed until the next day. So now I'm just like, I'm just going to get a rental car and just see Atlanta. So that's what I did. So I go immediately to the hood <laughs> and end up in Mechanicsville, right? And I'm just out there just like, you know, let me take in Atlanta and see what's going on. So as I was driving up here to get off the highway here, I seen a motorcade and I'm like, what's going on? Is the president here? No, this is when Kamala Harris had that speech. Couldn't believe it. So you see the people right here as they're, it was right as the venue was leaving. And um, so you can see me right here and you see right there on the radio station. Yeah, what was it? Yeah, I was out there Tuesday, July 30th at 8.04 p.m. Atlanta time. Tuesday, July 40th. That's when she had the, uh, I think, was that her first? That was her first uh, speech, wasn't it? So you see me kind of driving through and this area is, is, is not good. You can see right there, return at a Mac. Return of the Mac. So, yeah, I got to keep the sound off or whatever. Avoid copyrights. But you can actually see all the people kind of leaving the venue and they're holding the signs and stuff like that. As far as promoting Kamala Harris, you see all the police out there. and um, So I had no idea what I was driving into. And, you know, here's me kind of driving through or whatever. You know, these are some of the people that were out there promoting for or holding up the the Harris signs. This was before she even uh, announced uh, Tim Waltz as a running mate. This was before she announced Tim Waltz. So I'm out there. And then, uh, let's see, I got a couple more videos. Uh, what do we got here? Yeah, so this is like later on in the night and you just see like, I mean, the, the city was like completely, so this is me going into public, so I just wanted to go get some water and I don't remember what else I got. Maybe like a bag of chips or something, I don't remember. But I'm walking into Publix. And see me right there walking into Publix. Police out here looking like RoboCop. So they got armed guards in Publix. And then uh, let's see. Um, and their food prices were extremely high in Atlanta. Um, and this is me out. I went to this vegan pizza I'm spot. I went to this vegan pizza spot. But you see right here, I'm like right in the hood getting some, some pizza or whatever. And um, Bone County is different. Bone County is different, y'all. But yeah, I, had to come, I had to come out here real quick. But yeah, no, I was. You know, overall the convention. So I'm out there kind of talking about Fulton County. And then, um, so I was right there. So I know what I'm talking about. And this is my flight. This. Stuck in Atlanta. Grab a rental car. Go to the worst part of Atlanta. Basically on a suicide mission. Nothing but crime. I got to turn. Got to turn the volume down. I'll take y'all a little bit through this video. So you can see. That was actually a pizza spot I went to right here. Let me pause it. That was the spot I went to right there. Hold on. Right here? Yeah. I went to that plant-based pizza spot and got some vegan pizza. It was really good, so shout out to them. I don't remember the name and I can't see the name on this video, but, um, you know, maybe y'all can decipher it. Uh, but you see the city is just like, I mean, you'll see it right here. Like, I mean, this is this is their city, like, and I only captured a little bit because I didn't want to just be around like straight tourist, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, getting a line of sight of somebody and they try to carjack me or rob me, understanding that I'm not from town. Because I was out there with a little mini bag on me too, so I had to be careful. But, you know, I kind of want to see what's going on in the urban cities in Atlanta. And it's just graffiti and, you know, you can just tell that it's not a safe place to be. And this is right down the street from where they had the convention at, not far from uh, Georgia University, or uh, Georgia State University, I should say. You see right here, I mean, it's just a guy just, 
You see him right here. I mean, this is what you see everywhere. This is what you see everywhere, right? Um, I'll go up a little bit more and look at one more part. That was the post office right there. I still got the music on. I got Krispy Kremes on. Yeah, the music's still on. I can't let that play. I don't own the music. That's why you can't let it play. So it would get the uh, the sound would get taken off anyways. But you can just see it's just just awful. The, the so the mall's closed. You might not be able to see in the video, but they got gates up as far as behind that. You got guys just out there. They were shooting dice. Like these guys out there just shooting dice, which you know is a recipe for disaster. Because the first person that loses $50 is going to be ready to kill everybody to get his money back. You ain't losing. You ain't leaving with my money. Bet it back. Then you got to bet it back. Then you lose your money. Then you mad at him. I mean, dice is one of the worst games to play ever. A lot of men have lost their dice or lost their life playing dice. You see graffiti. You know what I mean? And I actually rolled past the Fulton County... Uh, do I got anything else? I think I got one more video. Let's see. What was on this one? Oh, yeah, you can just see right there. You know, that's where I was at. Mechanicsville community. So, you know, those that know the city or don't know the city, you know, that's where I was kind of coming into. And it's just a different place, man. Like, I still got... Yeah, I still got the music on. But, yeah, so... I actually went all over the city though. So like, these are just a couple videos, but what I did was um, I went everywhere throughout Atlanta and it was kind of crazy. Like I went by the courthouse, I went downtown. There were just rats running across the street. Um, there was a lot of very strange people, dangerous people. And you know, I'm not, I mean like honestly, it's not that I wasn't worried out there. I just really wanted to get an opportunity. I mean, I went down to the hood for a reason. I'm not um, in any way, shape, or form, although I try to stay out of the, that lifestyle, I'm not uh, oblivious to it, right? As far as the way that I grew up, you know, I decided to take myself out of those situations because it was, it's just awful. But like, honestly, none of it was a shock to me to see um, you know, but I just kind of wanted to see what was going on. And I actually visited some of the suburbs out there, too. And they do have some kind of nice suburbs if you kind of get outside the city and everything. So it was kind of crazy, you know, to do that. But, you know, so when we go back to what the original story is, um, I'm just not surprised by what happened. I guess we can go here real quick and then we'll wrap up everything. We'll just read the story. As far as what happened, um, was on the four arrests. The investigation, which began in May, and this is in August. Okay, so let's see, May, June, July. So they were doing this for about three months. They were doing this for about three months. So they worked their way into the system really quick, immediately attached themselves to some criminal guys in there, and then immediately started uh, moving in contraband for them. And let's realize that what they got caught for is probably not everything they did. They probably got caught for like a small percentage of what they already got away with. They just got careless after a while. And, you know, I think the book gave it away. When homegirl was walking in with that book, they were just like, just something ain't right about her. Something ain't right. You know, and they caught her. Um, let's see. She took the payment through Cash App. I mean, come on. Directly from the inmate. Paper trail. She confessed to uh, bringing in six cell phones, having sex with the inmate on three separate occasions in the jail. Like, how does this happen? Uh, Laquina, probably mispronouncing that is accused of set sending explicit photos and videos to an inmate and conspiring to smuggle cigarettes and cell phones into the jail. This is somebody's wife, mother, brother, <laughs> brother, might be. This is somebody's wife, mother, sister, daughter. Like, where's this? There, where's the respect, ladies? Why are y'all doing this? But it's always the man's fault. And the men blame the women too, but 
I see the women blame the men more. That's just what I see. Uh, let's see. So they all got bond. Only one had posted, of course. They're still getting out and being able to get back into the community. Uh, and the other woman said something strange. She said something strange. Um, where is it? This woman. She said we can't hire based off of... Hold on, let me see. She said something that was interesting. Phones allegedly confessed to smuggling in cell phones in a cutout inside a book. Yes. No one might say that Fulton County Sheriff... Hold on. Did she speak? She spoke twice, I believe. She said something that I wanted to cover. I think it's in this clip. Let's see. $682. We can't screen for integrity. Natalie Ammon. We can't screen for integrity, but you can stereotype the hell out of somebody and make an educated decision based off the way they present themselves to you. Or at least the way they communicate with you. Because, all right, cool. Let's say you don't want to stereotype, which I don't think is a bad thing. Not in the way of stereotyping in a traditional sense, but I'm talking about for safety and for having some type of understanding of what you're dealing with based off the way somebody presents themselves. I'm not talking about things that you can't control, right? I'm talking about the way that you communicate, the way you speak, the way you show up for a job interview. I mean, showing up, not giving a damn with eyelashes like this and kinky twists and colored hair is probably a giveaway that you're up to something nefarious. And that's just me. I'm going to look at those as red flags. I'm probably going to stay away from that naturally. But others might be attracted to it and others might want to hire them to work at the Fulton County Jail. And then now all of a sudden you got them bringing contraband into the inmates and nobody's taking accountability. This woman takes no accountability for her hire. A total of $1,682. Right we can't screen for integrity. Natalie. So we're going to go dark on this one, team. I'm done with it. This is crazy. We're going dark. This can't be light. Those women are not going to have harsh sentences given to them, if any... And nobody's going to take accountability for this. And the only people that are really going to get punished for it are probably the men with inside the jail. Because they're going to say that they manipulated the women and the women were weak and it wasn't their fault. And they were under distress and they were scared. And listen, y'all. Women should not be working at men's correctional facilities. These women gave them a bad name and image. And I don't even understand why the women are working there in the first place. Work at a women's prison, men work at a men's prison. Ain't the whole point of when you go to prison or jail is that you're separated from the opposite sex as far as who you're in the jail with? And then you bring in COs and then they end up giving the men exactly what they want. One of the main things about going to jail for either sex, but mostly the men, well, probably I would say both equally, is that you can't procreate while you're in jail. You can't have sex with somebody. Those men could have actually got those women pregnant. It might be. They might be pregnant right now. So it kind of defeats the purpose to have women working in the men's jail and vice versa. That's just how I feel. That's probably one of the worst things about being in jail. I'll be honest. If men and women could be in jail and still have sex with the opposite gender, or even be in jail and it's all one thing mixed together where it's just men and women in jail. Like it's just genderless, like you just go to jail. Like I don't even think a lot of people would care about being in jail. <laughs> I think they'd be fine. You get to eat for free. You get to live for free. Everything's taking care of you. You get your clothes washed. Now these conditions aren't the best, but there's people right now, I would just showed you the video of Atlanta. It's guys, it's women just standing on the block, pushing carts, living, living in carts, living under bridges and tents, outside in the elements, sleeping on park benches. To be honest, prison is an upgrade. The only thing you're really missing is sex. <laughs> I'm just being, are you, like, if you really think about it, that's just the truth. Team, this goes a lot deeper than what we're seeing.
That's why when I do these videos, y'all probably like, he goes off and he talks about a lot of different things, but it's so much deeper than what we see. That's why we have to really, really cut into it and get to the center of what's going on and not just look at everything surface level. I appreciate y'all team. I am going to get out of here. Dot so the undirected guy always gives y'all one of these. If you stay to this, I appreciate you. And y'all are the best audience on the planet, on the face of the earth, on the internet of things. I don't even know what to say. Hey, honestly, me personally, yo, I, hey, man, would it be worth it for me to go to jail? If I, I'm saying if I could have like women in there. Like if I could still have a relationship in jail like normal and I got all the perks. They got basketball courts there. Cards. You can, they probably got a pool table in some of them. TV, radio. I mean, a guy was getting explicit pictures sent to him. I can get a cell phone in there. All I got to do is communicate with a with a woman CEO. She'll be bringing me in. Uh, she'll be bringing me in cell phones to a hollowed out Bible. I mean, I'm really not losing. You get me my iPhone in there, a charger. Maybe slipping a MacBook. Shoot, I'll be in my jail cell still recording content like this. I'll be like, yo, hey, shorty, I'm gonna need you to go. Go to my, go to, go to my spot, go in there, you know, go in there, pick up, grab, go in there and grab my, um, grab my mic, grab my, grab my Rode Podcaster Pro 2, grab my Stream Deck. Camera and all my equipment. You just smuggling in. All you gotta do is just smuggle in, baby. I got you, baby. <laughs> I'm done, y'all. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm tripping. I need to go to sleep. <laughs>